we're here to dedicate the city of Brockton as a Purple Heart community. As a consequence of that, we're honoring um, 25 recipients of the uh, Purple Heart. And by no means does that include everyone from Brockton who has received the Purple Heart. There have been more than two million awarded since uh, the inauguration of the award in 1782. So without further ado, we'll begin today's program by posting colors. At this time, I invite Anna Anise of Brockton High School to lead us in the national anthem. Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. be seated at this time. Thank you. The Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration in the world in current use. Created by General George Washington in 1782, it is awarded to members of the United States Armed Forces who are wounded by an instrument of war in the hands of the enemy, or posthumously to the next of kin in the name of those who are killed in action or die of wounds received in action. It is specifically a combat decoration and was the first U.S. decoration to be awarded for the personal suffering of the common soldier. Nearly two million Americans have received the Purple Heart. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Reverend William McCoy to provide an invocation of today's service. The psalmist declares, though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet will I be confident. Let us bow our heads and unite our hearts in prayer. 
Today we honor and pride those from our past, O Lord. Today we keep company with the fallen, with the broken, and with those oppressed by the wounds of violence and war. Today we give thanks for those who've paid a painful price, those who've known the hardship of combat, those who've borne difficult burdens, those who supported comrades, friends, and allies, those who've opposed the enemies of freedom and upheld the freedoms we now enjoy. For the wounded ones, O oh Lord, and those who received them back, let there be someone ready when the memories come, when the scars pull and the metal moves and the mercy promised proves elusive. Grant each of us hearts with strength to conquer pain, to offer compassion for those who suffer, and courage in the face of fear, even love where hatred reigns. We pray that sacrifices made serve the interests of your peace, a peace that's full and rich and just, a lasting peace for our children and for generations to come. In a world torn by violence, by fear, and by hostility, O oh Lord, do not let our hearts be hardened. Help us embrace those in need of our support, to move beyond seeking justice to building a world governed by your grace. We pray for the day when nations pursue understanding over violent means to resolve their many differences. We pray, O oh Lord, that places of pain may become powerful, that empty places be filled with healing and with hope. In the presence of those we love, O oh Lord, in remembrance of those gone before us, in anticipation of those yet to come, may we exercise the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to trust in you and to be our best selves that our, let our lights shine through the darkest darkness of our days in the interest of your holy peace. All this we humbly ask in your name. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite the mayor of the city of Brockton, the Honorable Robert F. Sullivan, who is the primary driver behind this reception today. Thank you, David. First of all, I want to thank David Farrell and his team here. Without his efforts and his dedication and his service, his own service to this nation, um, we would not be here today. I want to thank Kurt Powers. You'll be hearing from him in the Purple Heart organization. I'm proud to be here today to, first of all, acknowledge heroes, true heroes from the City of Champions. But before I, uh, I say some remarks, I want to recognize some fellow elected officials that have joined us today. Uh, State Representative Claire Cronin, thank you for being here, Representative. State Representative Jerry Cassidy, thank you, Representative. City Councilor Shirley Azak, thank you, Councilor. City Councilor Tina Cardozo, thank you, Councilor. And Councilor Jack Lally, thank you for all being here today. So when I, and I also actually from the VA, uh, Dr. Dr. Ning, uh, Vincent Ning is here, and Elena Buckley, uh, thank you for what you do for our vets here in the City of Champions. When David and I talked about honoring heroes from Brockton, um, we first looked at folks that paid the ultimate sacrifice, that fought in battle and didn't come home, and others that paid a sacrifice but made it home. And we were able to come up with some names today to honor those. And there's some family members here, and there are some Pearl Pop recipients that are here in person. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. Some of these individuals I had uh, the personal uh, um, ability to know in person. Um, Corporal Mark O'Reilly was my teacher and my swimming coach, and his family's here today. And um, of course, we can never forget um, Private First Class James Lawton, uh, Judge Jim Lawton, who I knew during my law school days, and his family is here. There's other ones that I personally have a family connection to because um, when I look at Technical Sergeant Joe Tomaselli, uh, he is the uncle of my, my mother-in-law, Lorraine Louisi and Anthony Louisi. So I've been able to hear stories and, and, and see photos. And, and, uh, and Joseph didn't make it home. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. But there's so many stories uh, that we can share and we can talk about. And that's what we need to do. We need to share because we need to learn from history to forge forward. I'm going to take a moment to read off the honorees. Uh, Lance Corporal Patrick Barnes, Sergeant Thomas Bollander, Sergeant Phil Bowden, the family of Private Frank Capozzi, the family of Private First Class Richard Carroll, 
the family of Lieutenant John H. Cashman, Sergeant Larry Dozier, Gunnery Sergeant Daniel Eddy, the family of First Lieutenant John Fox, who also was a recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor, the family of Private William E. Gate, Jr., the family of Staff Sergeant Culver M. Graves, the family of Specialist 4 Timothy Holster, the family of Private First Class James Lawton, the family of Specialist Paul E. McCauley, the family of Sergeant Alberto Mondron, the family of Private Et Etienne Murphy, Corporal Robert Orcutt, the family of Corporate Mark O'Reilly, the family of Captain Anthony Palermo, Jr., the family of Staff Sergeant Edmund Peralt, the family of Private Robert Pierce, the family of Lance Corporal Daniel Sullivan, the family of Private First Class Walter O. Taylor, the family of Technical Sergeant Jomis, Joseph Tomaselli, and the family of Staff, Staff Sergeant John F. Washington. As I said today, it's an honor and privilege to be here as the mayor of the city of Brockton uh, and to be a lifelong Brocktonian. But we need to just take a moment to, to honor everybody that has served our fine nation. I've never served a day, but I'm thankful every single day when I wake up and thank the, vet, the, the, the veterans, the men and women that have served and continue to serve our nation. We wouldn't be able to be here and assemble together as a community without their sacrifice, without their dedication to the United States of America. So I just wanted to, first of all, thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your schedule. I want to just not let you know that this is the first of many of these. Two years ago, I stood up on this stage as a candidate for mayor, and I said at that time to Mr. Farrell, if I'm fortunate, something missing in the War Memorial, David, if I'm fortunate to become mayor, we're going to make a difference. And he said, what is it, mayor? He said, we need to put the flags up of all the armed branches here in the nation. And look, they're up. And I know there's other Brocktonians. I can think of one right now, thanks to Rep Cronin. Uh, he used to be the city solicitor, Jim D'Ambrose. He's a recipient of the Purple Heart. So we have, uh, we have not forgotten those uh, that have been recipients. This is just phase one of many, many phases in the city of Brockton. So again, I want to thank the Honor Guard. Many of our brave police and fire and city workers and teachers served, and they continue to serve. And we'll never forget that. So, David Farrell, thank you. We are now a proud Purple Heart community. The city of Brockton is a proud city of champions. And the brave men and women that we honor today are truly champions from our city. Be well, stay safe, God bless. And please know that I have an official citation for everybody that David Farrell will be able to give out. But I'll just read what it says. For those living, this is what it says. And for those that's passed, it says something a little different, but the tone and the intent is genuine and heartfelt. Receiving, in recognition of receiving the Purple Heart while serving our nation bravely and selflessly, we are truly grateful for your service to our country and your heroism. The Purple Heart is awarded to an armed service member who has greatly sacrificed themselves or paid the ultimate price while on the line of duty. I proudly uh, sign it today, the fifth day of October, 2021, Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton. God bless you, God bless the City of Brockton, God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I invite to the podium Kurt Power, who is the uh, chapter representative for the Military Order of the Purple Heart. It's such an honor to be here today in the City of Champions. Not only as a Purple Heart recipient myself, but the Military Order of the Purple Heart State Service Officer for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. They say the road to freedom is paved in Purple Hearts. And that's because of the amazing wounded warriors and Gold Star families that are here today. I couldn't be more proud of the city of Brockton and want to say thank you so much from the Military Order of the Purple Heart for your support of America's combat wounded veterans. Thank you. God bless the great city of Brockton, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kurt. That concludes the uh, part of the program associated with the dedication of Brockton and its commitment to 
being a Purple Heart city. The colors can now be retired. And please, uh, we do have lunch prepared. Uh, it's in boxes in the conference room to the right, so if you could uh, take one table at a time and go through the line and uh, uh, provide, get a lunch, please return to your table so that we can get to know each other a little better and share this uh, exceptional moment. Thank you.